about the biggest criminal fraud heist in British history in the heart of Westminster. Gerald Carroll was once head of Britain's third largest private business. The value of his empire was estimated at half a billion pounds. Although something of a recluse, he had powerful and influential contacts. At the height of his powers, his organisation consisted of 85 companies, collections of art, cars, wine and stamps, as well as a fine library. It was all run under an umbrella trust, the Carroll Foundation. Today, he is bankrupt, ruined, he says, by fraudsters who systematically robbed him of almost everything. And he believes his life is in danger. He's reported several attacks to the police. After two years of campaigning, the serious fraud office has finally begun to look into Carroll's extraordinary story. And for the first time, he's decided to tell it publicly to Sky News. I actually started on my own. I mean, this, this has never been really discussed, but I mean, I started at 18, 19, uh, like any young man. I mean, I wanted to try and get myself a nice sports car. And all my friends had sports cars, and I didn't have one. I just had 150 pounds my father gave me. Nevertheless, his businesses were thriving. He bought Warren Park a fabulous 500-acre stud at Newmarket with a fine house. This was Carroll's country seat, and it certainly befitted his image as a jet-setting entrepreneur. He had a private box at the Newmarket race course. He listed his recreations as racing, sailing and shooting, but he had another obsession, fast cars. The Carroll collection, mainly Ferraris and Lamborghinis, was housed in a lavish outbuilding at Warren Park. They had their own curator and were for Carroll a source of great pride and satisfaction. Visitors were regularly dispatched to Newmarket to admire the cars, followed by an afternoon at the races. Inexplicably, Gerald Carroll himself says he was shut out. He knew nothing of these developments and he claims his signature was either forged or a signature stamp was used. When you're running 85 companies, you really haven't got a clue. Once you have scale, you, you have to rely, you are, you are trusting on the individuals closely around you. So, so I, I thought I had a grip of what was going on. Clearly, what was going on was not actually what was being presented to me because I was being marginalised. There's no question about that.